All right, uh, welcome back to another Gravity Ace devlog. I'm recording this video in a slightly different way than I've done my past um, devlogs. Uh, reason being, I'm just trying to find a way that is a little bit faster to produce. So, you know, bear with me. Uh, hopefully this turns out okay. We'll see in a minute. I thought this week I'd show you guys um, how I build the tractor beam and how it works. So first of all, let's just take a look at it. So the tractor beam can be toggled on and off and it can attach to just about anything that moves. Uh, that's the intention anyway. Uh, so I'll just turn it on right here, but you'll see. So it, it comes on, but I can't really, I'm not really connected to the object yet. The, the tractor beam is connected, but I'm not really affecting its movement. And that's because the tractor beam works in two stages. The first stage is just the attachment phase and I'm connected to it, but it doesn't enter stage two until the tractor beam reaches its full length. So if I move away at some point there, I'm at the full range. And now I can actually pull, push the, uh, the object and the beam is staying at the same length. This is stage two. Let me turn it off. I'll get this guy. Let's grab this guy. So I'll activate it. Stage one and then lengthen it, stage two, now I'm connected. And I can swing this guy around, I can do some cool acrobatics with it, I can slow it, do a little push-pull here to get it to stop moving, and then I can, you know, I can swing it around like a club. Lots of fun stuff you can do with this tractor beam. So let me show you how it works. First thing we're gonna look at are the node setup. So let me go over to the ship. Everything about the tractor beam is in here. There's a ton of stuff in here, but the, the, the bits that we're interested in are this, the fact that the ship, first of all, it's a rigid body 2D. And it's got a bunch of stuff on it, you know, all the standard stuff in the ship. Uh, but the parts we're interested in are this pin joint. So there's a pin joint 2D centered right here on the ship. Uh, a pin joint is a way of connecting physics bodies together. Then I've got another rigid body called the tractor connector. And um, you can see that our pin joint is connected to the ship and to the tractor connector. And then I've got a tractor beam, which is another pin joint. And that pin joint, let me move this up here. That pin joint is connected to the tractor connector and then nothing, right? It's open on this other end. So what these three things allow me to do is it allows the beam to rotate independently of the ship. So when the ship is rotating, because of the way these pin joints are set up, it doesn't swing the um, tractor beam around at the same time, the tractor beam can move independently. Uh, I've also got a tractor timer. This tractor timer is basically a cool down uh, it's a half second long and uh, it basically, when this is running, the tractor beam can't be engaged or disengaged. So I'll show you how that works in a minute. But, uh, you know, basically if I activate the tractor beam, I have to wait half a second until I can deactivate it. It just sort of prevents like, um, you know, holding down the button for too long and the tractor beam just going nuts. And then there's this timer, which this one runs every 10th of a second. It's got a call back. And what this callback does is it's just trying to um, find the closest thing that can be beamed. And it does that 10 times a second, just trying to keep track of what's the closest thing that I can beam right now. So first, let me show you the script. Um, let me show you some variables here. So at the top of the script, we've got you know a bunch of stuff, but for the tractor beam, we've got a uh, target, which is a string, and that is gonna hold the path, the node path, to the object that we want to beam. It's got a flag that controls when the beam input can toggle the tractor beam. Uh, and this one's kind of tricky to explain, but basically if the tractor beam is off and I hold the button down, then the tractor beam will come on when it connects to something. And then even though I'm holding it uh, or release it, it still stays on that object. Uh, but if I, if I'm already on an object, I'm already connected and I hold down the tractor beam button, then what it'll do is it'll toggle off 
and then after a half second delay when the cooldown timer is done it'll try to toggle back on again so it prefers being on and this flag helps control that um, state and then closest beamable is an object that just keeps track of the closest beamable thing from this uh, timer that we talked about a minute ago so let me show you that so this function this is the one that's it's a callback it's being run every tenth of a second every yeah every tenth of a second so 10 times per second this is being called and it's pretty simple it's there's a bit of code in here but it's it's conceptually it's simple it's just trying to find the closest object that can be beamed and storing it in a variable so uh the first thing i'm doing is i'm getting the crosshair position um and then i'm looping here to find the closest beamable object i set the closest distance to some big number first of all uh, so that way I know when I find, uh, whenever I find something closer than this, I'll consider that one the closest one. I loop through all the nodes in the beamable group. Uh, I'll show you a couple of nodes in the beamable group in a minute, but uh, suffice to say it's not every object in the game. Lots of objects in the game can't be beamed, only moving ones can, rigid body 2Ds. So uh, this loops through all of those, and then it does some checks. First, is this object queued for deletion did somebody call queue free on it? it's about to go away if so skip it um, if it's not a valid instance skip it um, and then if the object has a beam target node the beam target node is um, it's a sub scene that I attach to all beamable objects that shows some UI some cool graphics on it when um, uh, something can be beamed when it's in range and when you've attached to it so this deactivates that beam target. Um, and this is here so that you don't have accidentally somehow uh, two beam targets active at the same time. Uh, and then it checks the distance. So anything, what it says is any if, if this object is in tractor range, then figure out the distance to the crosshair and find the one closest to the crosshair and assign it to the uh, closest beamable. It doesn't just assign the object itself, it assigns a weak reference to the object. And weak ref is kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial, but basically, so this lets me have a reference to that object without counting as a reference to that object. I'll show you how I use it in a second. So this that's the closest one, and then this is the closest distance. If it found one and it has a beam target node, then it, um, activates the beam target node on that one and if it didn't find anything then it just sets closest beamable to null so that's that's running every tenth of a second every 10 times a second uh, but we haven't actually activated the tractor beam yet the ship is calculating which one's closest um, the you know you're flying around but you haven't actually turned on the tractor beam yet to do that you need to track user input and that's done in my main game loop there's a main scene that holds uh, the level data, the ship, everything about the current level is in this scene. And this scene also tracks my, um, uh, does my player input. There's a function here, get player input. I call this in the um, physics process. And uh, right down here, I say there's two relevant ones. If the, tra ta ta if the toggle tractor action has been pressed, it, or is currently pressed, then it calls toggle tractor. If it's been released, then it calls toggle tractor with release equals true. So then let's go back to the ship and I'll show you the toggle tractor function. Uh, there's our release variable. So the first thing it does is it checks, is the game in edit mode? If it is, then it doesn't do anything. Is the ship alive? Is the player living? If not, then don't do anything. If release is true, then change this toggle tractor can toggle and basically what this tractor can toggle stuff do is what i talked about earlier um, it prefers having the tractor beam on if you're holding the button down it'll turn it on but not toggle it off again if it's off it'll toggle it or if it's on already then it'll toggle it off and then toggle it back on if you're holding down the button um, and then it just tries to get the closest object so the closest beamable again was figured out it's being calculated every 10 times a second um, if the closest beamable variable is not null and you can get a reference to that closest beamable. So this is why I use a weak ref, weak ref in closest beamable. Uh, weak refs have this function called get ref 
which returns the actual object that that weak ref points to. So if the object hasn't been deleted, if it's still in the world, if it's still in the node tree, then get ref returns the actual object. So if, if closest beamable is not null and I can get the actual object, then I set the closest object to that reference. So now I know what the closest object is. And if the closest object is found, it's there, and the tractor beam is not active, then try to turn it on. Uh, if it worked and I turned it on, then um, I set the tractor can toggle again. So that way it won't turn off again automatically just by holding the button down. I have to release and then press the button again, basically. Uh, if I didn't find a closest object, um, then play the uh, failure sound effect. Uh, and if, if the tractor beam was already active, then turn it off. So this tractor function is the one that actually turns on and off the beam, uh, the physics and everything for it. So let's look at that next. So the tractor beam works in two phases, like I talked about, and this function controls the first phase. So um, first of all, it checks the tractor timer, our cooldown timer. If the cooldown timer is running, uh, it doesn't do anything. It just, this function returns false. So there's a force parameter here. So what this allows me to do is just say force equals true. And regardless of the cooldown timer, it's going to do one of these things. But normally I don't, I don't call it with that parameter. And so it waits for the timer. So I'm going to talk about these two phases in reverse here, or these two blocks of code in reverse. This one actually does the attachment. So uh, let's talk about that one first. So what it does is it tries to take this object, sets it to the tractor target, uh, gets the node path and sets it there. If that object has a method attached to player, then it calls it. It shows the tractor beam sprite itself, does a little tween on it to animate its scale so it looks like it kind of warps into existence or stretches into existence. And then it connects a signal so that I know if the object that is being beamed is ever destroyed. Uh, if the object being beamed is ever destroyed, it just calls this method again with null and true. So object equals null and force equals true to just force it to turn off the beam. And then it starts the cooldown timer. If you call in with object equals null, it, uh, and there's already a tractor target, right? And that tractor target points to an actual node. Then it tries to get that node. If the node exists and it's real, then it disconnects the timer or sorry, it disconnects the uh, destroyed signal. And if it has a detached from player node, it um, calls that method. And then it tries disconnecting these uh, pin joints. So the stage one attach is done. Where does stage two happen? So stage two happens way up here in the um, physics process. So this is running every physics frame. And you know, there's some other stuff in here, but basically this is the stage two tractor beam stuff. If the tractor beam is active, then it tries to get the target of the tractor beam, the node that the target, the, the tractor beam is actually connected to. If that node is real, it exists, it's not null. Then it rotates the tractor beam sprite and scale. So it stretches it depending on the distance to the object. It, it rotates the tractor beam to point to the, the object. And then if the pin joint, the tractor beam pin joint here is not connected, then it checks the distance to that target. And if the distance is greater than or equal to the tractor beam, then it connects it. It connects that pin joint. And that's what enables stage two, where it's, um, you see, so, so that connection is rigid and you can push and pull the, uh, the object. So that's a lot. <laughs> um, uh, conceptually, again, there's a pin joint, a tractor connector, another pin joint, and these physics objects are connected to, uh, the target of the tractor beam in a two phase process. Phase one draws the, um, uh, beam rotating to the correct position, uh, and 
but doesn't actually connect the physics pin joint yet, so it doesn't actually affect them yet. Once the pin joint, once the distance between the two objects, the ship and the, the target, gets out to the tractor beam range, then it connects the pin joint. So now they're physically connected and you can rotate, you can push, you can pull, and then you can toggle the tractor beam on, you can toggle it off uh, to destroy these connections or, or start it over again. When the uh, object is destroyed, it'll just disconnect the um, physics joints, turn off the tractor beam, you know, stop all the animations, call detach from player, everything takes care of itself. So let's look at a object that can be beamed. Here's an asteroid. It's part of the beamable group. If I remove it from this group, it won't actually be, if you won't be able to beam it anymore. Um, here's a more complicated one, the generator. This was also in the beamable group. Uh, and this one has a couple of those neat methods I was talking about, attached to player and det detached from player. So these methods are called only if they exist so when you connect the tractor beam, what it's doing is it's saying, um, make this object part, put this object in the same collision layer as the player. So it becomes like a player object, which means the enemy can now shoot it. Um, and it does some things like it emits a signal saying it's been beamed, uh, it sets a flag, uh, shows and hides some icons. Um, and when you detach it from the player, it does, basically the opposite. It goes back to its original collision layer, which is as an enemy. So the player can shoot it, but the enemies can't. You can have this, these functions do anything. It depends on the object. Um, for the reactor core, what I'm, what I'm basically doing is just saying, when you beam it, it becomes like the player. And when you let it go, it becomes like an enemy again. So that's basically it. I hope this has been helpful to everybody. Um, as you can see, node to node communication like this can be kind of messy um i'm not sure there's any really good way to get around it um the the nature of game programming is that you're you know everything is connected to each other anyway uh everything affects everything else so it's it's hard to get away from that aspect of it uh, but using signals and references and um dynamically assigning node paths at runtime uh, it kind of gets around some of that where you can move things around in the node tree in the game but it doesn't really you don't have to change your code every time you do it anyway i hope that helps um, i hope that was interesting to you uh, let me just remind everybody before you go that coming up monday february 17th will be our second ambitious indie game night uh, the first one was an amazing time it's free uh, it's in Long Beach, California. It should be a beautiful day. Uh, February 17th, Monday, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Come by, drink some indie beer, play some indie games. Um, I hope you come. It'll be awesome to see everybody. Last time, like I said, was awesome. Thanks a bunch. Thanks for watching. Please tell your friends about gravityace.com. And see you next time.